Do you want that tight golf course lawn look to your turf, but don't want to commit to mowing your lawn four times a week? If so, plant growth regulators might just be for you. Coming up, I talk all about plant growth regulators in detail. I explain their benefits, the different classes of them, and I also go through a demo showing you how to apply them. It should be a good one. Hey YouTube, Ron here from Project Golf Course Lawn, season five. So plant growth regulators, what are they? Why should you care about them? And what are the benefits for your turf grass? So in this video, we're gonna talk about just all those topics. I'm gonna to go into detail about what plant growth regulators are, the different classes of them. Um, I'm gonna discuss the, the benefits, the cons, and then we'll do uh, a demonstration showing you how to mix them and how to uh, apply it to your lawn. Should be really good. So starting out, plant growth regulators. It, to understand plant growth uh, regulators, also known as PGRs, you need to understand gibberellic acid. So gibberellic acid, kind of a mouthful, is the hormone that plants, uh, you know, like in grass, like any other plant, use to elongate. It's what they use to grow. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a growth hormone to an extent. What PGRs do, what plant growth regulators allow us to do, is allow us to, to basically hack or, or, or manipulate um, gibberellic acid synthesis in the plant. So it allows us to, you know, you can speed it up to make the plant grow faster, or you can do it, in our case, um, you can retard, you can inhibit um, uh, gibberellic acid synthesis. So what that, what that does is essentially it slows down uh, the growth of, of turf grass. So now whenever you look online, you probably see all types of PGRs. You hear about uh, Primo Max, you hear about um, Podium, you hear about Tide Paclo 2SC, you hear about all these different types of, types of growth regulators. Before you can understand which one you should choose, we need to understand uh, like, you know, the different classes of growth regulators. Uh, know that there are, about, there are currently about six classes, um, A through F, um, of, uh, but for our discussion, we only really care about two of them, the class A and the class B type growth regulators. So bring in my little prop here, my little buddy's gonna help me out. So class A growth regulators work later on in the pathway. They inhibit um, gibberellic acid uptake later on in the pathway, meaning in the leaf area, right? So you, that's why when you look at um, examples of, um, of, of class A's, you'll know it's a class A because it'll talk about spraying it on the, on, the, on the turf and allowing it to dry on the leaf before rain. So those types of regulators have, um, have a, the requirement that, that you really want typically four to six hours before any kind of watering or heavy rain. So they allow it to, to, to dry on the leaf and so that it can begin um, it, its uptake. So those, those are your class A's. Class B type regulators, are work earlier in the gibberellic acid pathway cycle. So those are the ones that, that, that um, pretty much take up gibberellic acid through the roots. So class A is the leaf, class B type are the roots. Now, the, 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 the pros and cons of each, the, the pros of the class A's um, are that they, they, they work a lot faster. So you, if you spray a class A type growth regulator on, on, your, on your turf, um, then in two to three days, it's gonna begin regulating growth whereas the class Bs take a little bit longer to work because they, because, because they're, um, they come up through the roots, they take anywhere between seven to 10 days to begin working. The benefit though is that they work a little bit longer. So when it comes to class A regulators, examples of that would be the, ma the major brand is um, Primo Max. Um, and it's the, the, the active chemical in it is, is trinexapac ethyl. That's a, that's a mouthful. It's the name of the active ingredient that helps um, inhibit uh, gibberellic acid synthesis in the leaf, right? So trinexapac ethyl. That's so that's that's uh, um, the the active ingredient that you're looking for whenever you're trying to, to, to determine a a class A. So Primo Max is the is the main one, but then there are a lot of offshoots, a lot of generic versions of Primo Max, um, like uh, Podium is an example, Tnex. Those are all um, pretty much offshoots of Primo Max. They all contain the same um, active ingredient. Again, trinex trinexapac ethyl. <laughs> and again, that is absorbed through the leaf. Two to three days to begin working, and uh, that, that's those. The second class, or class B, the one that we're, that we're gonna, um, I'm gonna be applying today, and the one that I, I kind of prefer um, uh, are absorbed through the leaf and are absorbed through the roots, and the active ingredient in that is called patrobutrazole. <laughs> Um, and you'll know the names of that because most of the of the um, the growth regulators will have like Paclo or Tide Paclo or Paclo 2SC. They'll have like Paclo somewhere in the name um, for for those types of growth regulators. So again, so class so class A through the leaf, class B through the root, um, class A two to three days to begin working, 
class B, uh, seven to 10 days to get it to, be, to start working. Now here's the thing that's interesting about this. Most people apply um, one or the other. You can actually apply both of them at the same time. Um, the, the, the difference is to, thing to keep in mind is class A um, uh, growth regulators tend to work for about uh, three to four weeks, depending on how much rain you get, uh, fertilization, a couple other factors, but three to four weeks of regulation is what you can expect out of a class A. Again, the ones that are, that are, that are absorbed through the leaf. Class B um, work a bit longer, uh, so those will, will last for you know, anywhere between six to eight weeks of regulation. Um, and again, those are coming, coming through the root. So if you're mixing them, if you decide to mix them, and I'm not gonna do it in this session, but um, I think in a later video, I'll show um, um, applying both uh, uh, TNX, which is the one I'm gonna use um, for the class A, and then uh, Tidepaclo for my class B um, at the same time. I'm only gonna do the class B today, but if you decide to mix them, the thing to keep in mind is, whichever of the two has the longer regulation rate, if you're only applying them at the same time all the time, you're gonna go by that one. So even though your class A can be reapplied every you know, three to four weeks, your class B really, really can only be applied every um, six to eight weeks. So if you're mixing them, that means you're gonna be applying both really only every six to eight weeks. So that's just, just keep that in mind. You can, you can do both. The benefit of doing that is that you get uh, better, better growth regulation. Um, it doesn't necessarily make it last any longer, but, it, but you do um, start uh, getting, getting that regulation a bit faster and it, and it does regulate growth a bit, a bit more. So what you could expect out of both chemicals is, is fairly similar in that when using these on your turf grass, you're gonna see about a 50% reduction in, in having to mow. So, so whereas if you're, if you're mowing at, at very low heights, um, you know, whereas you're, you might be mowing every other day in, in the middle of, of the summer where it's really hot and Bermuda is actually actively growing really vigorously, you can reduce that to like to half that. So it might be twice a week, you know, maybe even less depending on, um, on, on, on conditions. So uh, it's a huge benefit of, of using these. Uh, less mowing frequency, that's the first reason why you'd want to use these because you don't want to be out here mowing your grass all the time and unless you're crazy like me and enjoy it. Uh, the second benefit is that you get a uh, greater uh, leaf density. So the leaves, um, the effect that these, these chemicals have on the leaves is they, get, they get, tend to get the, the leaves um, thicker and, and more dense. So you get that tighter weave, a very, like, that really tight, dense carpet look, which has a benefit of one, looking really nice, and also as like a natural weed control, works really great because weeds can't really compete as well because they're, being, they're basically being choked out by the grass. Um, another benefit, the third, is uh, color. So when you're applying uh, PGRs to your turf, uh, you, you, you tend to get a, a, a deeper color to the grass. So, I mean, you can see how my lawn is looking now. This is actually, look, this is actually pretty good now, but believe it or not, with PGR on it, it'll get even better. It'll get even, even that, that, that deeper green. It'll look almost like a bluish, bluish green. It's really, really, it's a really cool effect. And then fourth is that you require less nutrients. If you think about it, right? You, you look up, think about a, a bodybuilder. When they're working out all the time, they gotta eat a lot, right? So if you're, if you're, you're growing a lot vigorously, you gotta eat a lot. So you gotta feed the lawn a lot of um, more nitrogen um, and more nutrients to keep the lawn healthy. With PGRs applied, because we're suppressing that, you need less. You can actually get away with less nitrogen, less iron, less, a little bit of less everything. So that's, that's the benefits to them. Uh, four main benefits, less mowing, greater leaf density, better color, and then if you, and less requirements for nutrients to feed the lawn. Now the cons, uh, cons are cost really. Uh, so the growth regulator I'm gonna be using today, Tide Paclo 2SC, this guy, um, a, a bottle of this goes for about $250. So it's not inexpensive. Now um, I've had this for one season already, and I've applied it to my lawn and several friends' lawns. So you can you can easily get two seasons out of out of a single bottle. Um, uh, the the class A like T necks, your podiums, your Primo Maxes are a little bit cheaper. Those you're going to be able to pick up for around $150. Um, but again, so that's your, that's your big thing is that they just they they're not they're not inexpensive, but um, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't beat the results you get from them. The second one is just the time to apply them. So you have to get out here with a backpack sprayer and you're gonna you'll be putting, down, putting them down on the lawn. Um, so that takes time. But really, that's kind of offset by the fact that you're just not mowing as much. So the biggest, the biggest um, downside to these is cost. And you do need some kind of equipment, like a backpack sprayer, like what I've got here, um, to, uh, to, to apply the product. So application rates. Uh, these are, I'm, I'm gonna put the actual chart up here on the, on the screen now for TNEX. Uh, for TNEX, the application rate for, for, for Bermuda, for the one, for what I'm using, which is like a TIF 419 hybrid with some Arden 15 and Princess 77 um, mixed in, I believe if memory serves me is like point, um, 0.38 is about, 0.38 ounces per thousand square feet is about where you wanna be. 
Um, that's that's that or slightly less than that is is what you're after. 0.25 to 0.38 ounces for per thousand square feet for a hybrid type uh, Bermuda grass lawn or um, zoysia is a little bit less. If you guys look on that chart, you'll see that zoysia is a little bit um, lower near the bottom there. And I think the, the, the rates for zoysia are a little bit lower. So just, pay, just take a look at that chart or also look at the label whenever you get the product and it will it'll tell you how to apply it. So it's one of these things where with, with growth regulators, more is not better. Like you, if you apply more, you're not gonna get a longer growth regulation, regulation and there's a limit of how much of this stuff you can put into the turf in a growing season. So really, I implore you to only to follow the rate. I mean, you're gonna get great results just following the label rate, more is not better. When it comes to Tide Paclo, um, we're gonna be using a little bit more of that. So Tide Paclo, um, the rate for Bermuda grass um, is anywhere between um, 0.74 um, ounces per thousand square feet or 1.1 ounces per thousand square feet. So the, the 1.1 ounce per um, thousand square feet number is is probably what we're gonna be using today because that because in Georgia we have clay soil. And if you look at the chart that I'll put up on the screen now, you see that it makes mention based, if you're dealing with sandy soil, you can get away with a, with a slightly uh, lower application rate. When you're dealing with clay soil, like what we have in, in Georgia, you're gonna wanna use something a little bit, um, at least a little bit more of the product. So it, to, to, to do that, we wanna make sure You've got you've got your um, your measuring uh, utensil your measuring cup and you've got it marked off. You can see here I've got two marks here. One of them that's my point um, seven four. That's the lower application rate. And then I've got this mark here, which gets me closer to one point one. I've measured this um, with a with a, a scale. So I've actually you know um, put on a scale, fill it with, with the product, and actually measure the weight of it to make sure because if you depending on which one of these cups you get, you can see they're they're, they're calibrated for different types of products. So I I, I would recommend that regardless regardless of what you get, um, you know, get the product, or sorry, get, get the measuring tool, um, put it on, on an actual scale that's accurate, and then fill it with water, and, and, and make sure you get to, and, and mark where that, where you get the, the, the application number that you're looking for. So again, for Tipaclo, 0.74 is what we're looking for for the low end, and then today we're gonna be going at 1.1 rate, which is where this line is right here. As far as um, things to know about when you're applying this stuff, it's like any other chemical, you're gonna wanna have your, your, your PPE on, so I'm gonna put my gloves on um, here, and I'm gonna have a set of safety glasses because you really wanna keep this stuff out of your eyes. You don't want um, this stuff blowing in your eyes. I mean, it's not, it's not hyper toxic, but like, like anything else, I mean, it's, it's not super toxic, but it's not water either, right? The more you can minimize exposure to this on your, on your body, uh, uh, the better. So I'm gonna mix this with about, um, in my uh, backpack sprayer here, I've got this with um, up to four gallons of water. You wanna use at least three gallons. Uh, this holds four, so uh, let's do that now. So I'll put my, uh, my eyes on, because you only got one set of peepers. Give this a good shake. And then we will apply this to the product. It's kind of cool the way this looks. It's, it's got kind of like a, like a white, milky kind of color to it. So I've got this measured out, and let's pour. And there we are. So come around on this side. Yeah, that's good. You guys can't make that on camera, but I can see it here. I'm right, I'm right at the at that 1.1 number. So and now I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna let that sit in there. And kind of like last time, I'll recap this. Kind of like last time, I'm gonna grab my hose and we're gonna we're gonna top this guy off. So what I like to do is one rinse out the cup to make sure I'm getting all my product. I mean, this stuff's expensive. You don't want to waste it, right? So mix it up, make sure you rinse out your cup, get all the product in there. Good. And then I'll top this off. All right, throw a cap on and we'll give it a good mix, a good shake. Turn my sprayer on and we use my technique for getting this, getting this mounted up. All right, cool. So as you guys remember from my other videos, a thousand square feet is this area here, like where the shrubs are, just out slightly past that um, purple plant. So I'll show you guys how I'm gonna put this down. It's not anything special, kind of prime system. And we're just gonna make night pat nice passes. Now, here's the thing, another option for applying this, if you'd like, you can use some kind of marking dye. I don't like the, what, what, what the marking dyes do to the color of the lawn, so I don't, I don't tend to use them, and I've had pretty good results 
without using them. So um, that's an option if you wanna add some color and just be able to see where, where you're putting it down. So again, smooth passes overlapping. The idea is I know that what I've got in here covers about a thousand square feet. So you can make a pass and if you need to make another pass, just you know, however, however you wanna go about it. And there's no, just, there's, there's no, uh, no wrong answer. So we'll start here and we'll smoothly come across. Nice and smooth. And that's it guys. So I'll set the camera up and I'll let you guys watch me doing uh, the rest of this. Um, one other tip um, that we didn't, I didn't mention, if you are, um, if you're so inclined, you can also take this as an opportunity to add like a, an iron supplement or, um, you know, I would say this sort of liquid fertilizer, but, but what, what I've done in the past is I've taken, I've used uh, this product, it's gonna Brent um, Supreme Green, but any other um, iron supplement that's liquid iron, you can add it to this. I've done that very successfully in the past. Um, what I would recommend if you're gonna do that though, don't do a full rate, do like, you know, um, perhaps half rate. I've recently applied this product to the lawn, so I'm not gonna put any down today, but just to know that you can mix other products with Tide Pack Low 2 SC and it's, it's gonna be just fine. You know, I've, I've done that several times in the past. Uh, if you wanna see some of my other videos from last season of where I did that, be sure to check, it, check the card here, and, or here rather, and you'll be able to, to see that. So let's get into it. Let's just throw this product down. Well, there you go, YouTube. So I've applied uh, Tide Packlo 2SC to 1,000 square feet. I've still got um, quite a bit there. I was going a little bit fast, but I'll, I'll go over this area again, make another pass to, to get that product down at the, at the actual rate. Um, and yeah, we should be good to go. So the thing to keep in mind with this, remember, with the um, Class B type, like which, which Tide Packlo is, you're gonna wanna water that in within 24 hours or so of putting it down on the lawn. Um, we're supposed to get rain later on today. Um, or tomorrow. So worst case um, scenario, if, I, if we don't get rain today, I'll just run the sprinklers um, later on this evening or, or early tomorrow morning to make sure this gets into the turf. So that's your big thing with your with your class B's like Tide Packlow. Remember, they absorb through the root. So you want to make sure you get it, wash it down into the soil so the, so the plant can begin taking it up. Seven to 10, ten days, you should start seeing results. If you're doing a class A, it's so like your Primo Maxes, your Podiums, your T-Nexes, um, all those are um, absorbed through the leaf. So again, when you put that down on the turf, um, you don't want to water it. Let it sit, let it dry on the leaf. It, it, the, the, I think the recommendations on the, on the label typically say uh, uh, six hours, at least six hours before rain or watering. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's the guidance there. So I hope you guys found this useful. Um, again, uh, if you guys um, are enjoying this content, please consider uh, liking and definitely, definitely if you want to continue getting updates from me as I begin to develop the series even more, consider subscribing. Uh, this is part of a series that I'm putting together on lawn care for your home lawn, just helping you uh, improve your lawn to get that, that golf course lawn look with as um, little work and investment as possible. Um, again, I've, I put a lot of work into, into my lawn over the years, so I have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't work. So hopefully you guys will trust me with your subscription and know that I'm gonna put out content that's gonna be useful for you. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna get the backpack sprayer on and finish this up. And uh, you know, I'll definitely give you guys an update video showing you how the lawn progresses. Probably about a week from now, um, there'll be a video showing uh, the state of the lawn now, as we're gonna show in this video and then how it's being suppressed. I'll report on mowing and that kind of thing because seeing is supposed to get a lot of rain here in the next couple of in the next week or so. So we'll see how, uh, how the PGR works once it begins to, to, to work in the turf. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See you guys next time. Have an amazing day.